will start us out in the second session as we ran through 115 of 127. And we had 12 of them drop out. For either mechanical failure or something on the cruise. 1091, 130 for James Hellerman. 1244. Well, as many of you know, I got a GT500. So we're going to have a little fun today and show you some of the neat uh, engineering tricks they did on this thing. So here you go. You can see one really cool thing I caught right off the bat. See that hole through there? If you can see that red, that's the brake caliper. There's one on the other side too, but it's not as obvious. There's actually vents that go all the way through and come out at the brake caliper. There's coolers on each side in the front. There's the regulator radiator in here. Then there's also a scoop that goes down. I'm not even sure what all these specifically cool. I know there's the intercooler. This duct here is a uh, direct injection right into the air filter. But they just capped off this side. There's some really neat stuff with these splitter wickers. That's on the handling package. This is a, not a carbon fiber track pack, but I did have the handling package. I just wanted a car I could actually drive. There's a whole belly pan. Here you can see the access panel for the oil filter. A fairly complicated suspension setup with multiple links, considering it's a McPherson strut. Extraordinarily large brake calipers, 16.4 inch rotors with six pot calipers like you'd expect. Just the two can style catalytic converters. You see the DCT transmission, all the cooler lines. And here, let's see, they actually got a solid steering joint. You see an electric steering rack, of course. You see this huge oil pan and those cool engine mounts. I got heat shielding on the starter, heat shielding on wiring. This oil pan's 11 and a half quarts of oil. And I come back to a nice billet transmission mount. Look at this exhaust. This is bone stock exhaust. That's a looks to me like a cast stainless X. Resonators all the way back. And as some of you know, the exhaust actually has a butterfly valve inside of there. And you have several modes. In the rear, there's another cooler in the rear valiance. And that's just for the rear axle under this pan. I've already had to remove this once to remove rocks. As you can see, up in there is the pump. Hard to get in there. There you go. You can see the pump and the radiator in there. All the lines. There's the temp sensor right in the dash. Cast iron third member. Independent rear with several links. And I haven't really even researched on what's all going on here. And you know me, I'm a suspension guy, so I gotta dig into this. I'll be doing some work on here. Here's a really neat feature. That's a carbon fiber drive shaft right from the factory. Saddle tanks like you'd expect, but all covered, all the lines are covered all the way forward with this plastic. I kind of like that. I think they learned a lot of lessons from our cars and all the modifications we've been doing to the Cobras over the years. And they really integrated a lot of it into here. There's even ride level sensors on all four corners. Now, of course, that's all stuff that's known to fail on it old Lincolns and stuff, so we'll see how that bears the test of time. And a fairly stout, stiff chassis here. Of course, I'm going to get some rail supports to help lift the car off the ground because I have to use uh, ramps to drive it up on right now to get my lift under it. And then, I don't know, you let me know in the comments what you think. I got this resonator delete. But it requires me to cut the exhaust right here where I drew that line. You gotta take that heat shield and modify it. I was thinking I'd make a different one maybe instead of modifying that one. 
I don't know if I want to get rid of the resonators or not. I might introduce a drone or something annoying because it's a pretty nice, really nice ride down the highway right now. And uh, I don't know if I want to lose that or not. I got the Cobra if I want a loud race car, right? And I got another one I'm building. So this was meant to be just a nice car to drive. And it is. I'll tell you what, I took it all the way to Bowling Green. Pretty much unmodified. I mean, look at those brake rotors. It's ridiculous. And uh, I ran a 10.9 at 130. And a lot of you know I'm not a drag racer, but it sure works. I'll let it down off the lift and I'll show you some of the stuff under the hood. And here we got it down. You see, a lot of people already know this, but it's got basically push style hood pins from the factory. Always kind of a bit of a pain to get up. But it's got a strut. I still got the rain tray in because I drive this car. It'll see some rain. Life will go on. I know how to use a car wash. As you see, I couldn't help it. I got a good deal on a JLT cold air, threw that in. Seriously doubt it does much. The factory design was pretty sweet, considering air intakes. It's a speed density, no mass air. Still a hand built on the Romeo line. This has the, because it has a handling package, it has the uh, oil separator. That's a factory oil separator from Ford. They installed that at the dealer for me. I didn't even have to do that. It's got cam apparently in there there's supposed to be camber caster plates. Doesn't seem too apparent to me. Vacuum booster, no hydro boost system, being the steering's electric. As you can see, let me grab the light here. It's a fairly complicated tight setup down in there. I believe there's some kind of clutch pulley on there. I got sensors right here on the uh, that's the intercooler line right there. And in the dash you can read all that stuff. I'll show you that in a minute. It's tight under here and you thought our Cobras were tight when we got them. There ain't nothing compared to this. There's not a whole lot going on here I love that strut brace so this chassis is stiff and it got ridiculously large tires on the front so it, it turns I'll still testify that my Cobra is faster than this but boy you got to work your ass off to drive the Cobra fast where this just happens my wife could drive this fast and that says a lot now to the inside Everybody loves that exhaust note. Oh, thanks for letting me know my hood's open. That's one thing these things do is tell you everything about everything that's going on, right, wrong, or indifferent. It always turns on in normal mode. You've got all your my mode, which I programmed with sport exhaust, sport shifting and engine performance, but normal steering and normal suspension so you could drive it on a rough road like we got. And of course, sport mode, which is all sport, and track, where you start losing a lot of your traction control. Oh, thanks. But you even got drag strip mode, which of course you know about. A slippery mode because I'm gonna drive this in the snow right I'll let you know how that goes and we'll just go back to normal and then we go we got the cover mode we can go to gauges show gauges so you could program it to show you like here I got the transmission temp in the middle I got the vacuum and boost and then on the right, I got 
uh, air charge temps. Over here in the middle, we got good old fashioned oil pressure and oil temp, which is, I love oil temp. You know me, good oil temperature is important. But you could toggle down, and here, right from here, you can look at your oil pressure, temp, trans, diff, voltage, air intake temp, manifold charge temp, vacuum boost, and the air fuel ratio. ratio. Wide band O2s right from the factory in here. And you got G meters, and that's all just memory you can reset. Culver mode, you can do all kinds of stuff on here. You got exhaust, you can customize your cluster, track apps, that's where you set up your launch mode. I like to leave it here so I know where I'm at because all them gauges are fine and dandy, but I don't need them when I'm just driving down the road. I also have it set up to keep the same tack when I'm in drag mode or anything. There's different ones. I like old school, I want two round gauges. I'm an old man, you know that. That's about it, other than that, it's got all the usual stuff. You know, the big thing is, I'm not shifting, unless I want to. I got paddles. But well, that's about it for that quick video. I'll get some driving videos later, and next spring I'll get a comparison between the Cobra and this, and we'll take some rips and put them side by side. It's basically animal versus tame. This is... 4,200 pounds with a uh, full tank of gas on the scale in Bowling Green. I know my other one was uh, 3,650 with a half a tank of gas, somewhere around there, and quite a bit of weight difference, and roughly the same power. This is 760. My other one's probably 800 engine. You know, you can only guess drive line loss. It runs around 660, 670 at most dynos wheel, and these run around 660 wheel also. So. That'll be fun. We'll deal with it. We got that in the spring to look forward to. Otherwise, leave any comments. Let me know what you want to know about this thing. You know, you, some of you guys probably know more than I do. You tell me. It's a lot of fun. I'll tell you what. It, I don't know if it was worth every penny. It was a lot of money, but so far it is. Thanks for watching. I'll get another video out sooner, I promise. <laughs>